This is Nikki with Design Like a Pro, and we're going to talk about feature articles in this episode. This is something a lot of you have been inquiring about, so here we go. Now, this article that we're going to design today is taken from a blog post over at digitalheart.com, which is where I feature all of these episodes. And we talked about the five key elements of a feature article your headline, your main image, a drop cap for your feature article, a blog quote and an alternate image. So we're going to design that spread that you saw, um, and you, if you haven't seen it, here's a link for you, that describes that article. So we're gonna design that today. The neat thing is, is it's actually a really simple article to design, and once you get the hang of it, it's a layout that can be whipped together fairly quickly. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna tackle is our headline. So in that, article I had a box here so we just have our rectangle tool we want to use these guides um, and our grid lines when we're designing our article that's why we have this here it's very helpful for placing items so I'm gonna drag this out here to oh let's see about there alright so it's empty so I'm gonna click my arrow again go over here to swatches pick a nice color let's go with gray alright and the next thing, we're going to take our text tool over here, click and drag out a text box, and type in our article text here. And I obviously need to change that font to something big and bold. And let's spell this correctly, shall we? All right. Now, one thing I like with my headlines is to use big, bold fonts. And then with my subtext for my article, then I, I like to use serif fonts. That's just something I prefer. Of course, I break those rules just as easily as I make them. Let's go ahead and make that a white over here to bump up that contrast. All right, so that's our headline. One thing to note when you're using all caps is you want to put a little extra space between your letters. Oops so that it's easier to read. One thing when you have all caps, it's a lot harder to read. So adding some extra space will help with that. All right, so the next step, let's get a big feature image in here. The way you wanna do that is go to File, Place. You can also drag and drop from any folder, that works too. Click my image here. When I place it, I have a nice little cursor that pops up that I can drop my image anywhere. So let's line this up. Just clicking and dragging here. One thing you want to do is make sure it goes all the way to that red line. That's your bleed so that it trims off our page. It's a little too big, so I'm going to shrink that down by coming to this bottom right corner, hitting Control Shift. Mac users, you're going to get a tool tip here. And I'm going to hold those keys down, click and drag that sucker up. Now when I do that, see what happens? It's sizing it proportionately. That's what we want. That's why we hold down Control Shift. I'm gonna use my lines here to place this right about there. All right, so now we have our big feature image. It's okay that it spans across this two page spread. We have a line down the center that guides us where it's gonna be folded. And it's okay, we don't have anything impo too important on our image here. So I kinda like things when they spread across helps guide the viewer into the next page. All right, and that's it for this page. Now let's get over here. After I place my feature image, I like to place my text next, just to see what kind of space we have. Go over here to our text tool, click and drag out a text box. Using your image as a guide, I like it when things line up. This is no exception. Go over here and set your text. I like a nice Adobe Carlson Pro at 10 and a half point here to get started. Now I really don't have a feature article text, so I'm gonna right click this text box and go fill with placeholder text. This is a nice little trick for you if you're just setting up a template, you wanna see how your article's gonna go before you actually have content. You can fill it with this gobbledygook stuff in here that uh, will help you in your process. The only thing is the uh, placement of your text looks kind of weird. 
So I'm going to create some paragraphs here just by intuition. So it looks a little bit more like an article. And there we go. One thing I like to do is select all of this with control A and go over here and justify this so it lines up. Nice square image. Now this is okay. Uh, we can deal with this. One thing though with your articles to make it just a little bit nicer is to add a column. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click in this white space, try to get away from a letter because obviously all of that's misspelled. So my InDesign is alerting me to that. Right click and go to text frame options. Now we have a lot of things that we can do here with our columns. Let's create two columns. Make sure preview is checked so you can see what you're doing. And another thing I like to have more space. That's your gutter right there. You can see more space between your columns. And you can add as many columns as you like. But we're going to go with two here just because that's kind of a nice separation. Click OK. And now we have two nice columns of text. One thing I want to do is I want to add a drop cap. What drop caps do is they kind of offset the first letter of your paragraph and it's your first paragraph typically that you want to do this with and it just makes it a little bit nicer, adds a little visual interest that says, hey, you want to start here. So if you go to paragraph and you come over here to your drop cap options, you actually can set the number of lines that that drop cap is going to take up. You can go large, small, or anywhere in between. Let's go with four lines. It's a nice big drop cap. Now one thing you can leave it like that if you like it, but I like to jazz up my drop caps just a slight bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the same text that I used for my headline. I like it when things match. And that was old sans black. All right, just to pull in a nice visual element there and it kind of creates some contrast between my main feature text and my drop cap. Now we can leave it black, but why do that? Let's go ahead and change the color to magenta. Now, why did I go with magenta? Well, because it's kind of used in this image. I like to use colors that reside in my image. It pulls that visual look together, plus it complements this gray really well. All right, so now we have a nice drop cap. Already our article is starting to shape up. There's two more components that we want to add, one being a block quote. Now a block quote is a line of text that is pulled directly from your article and placed into a separate text box, given some different styling so it separates from your article. But it's a nice quote that really gets the gist of what your article is about. So let's go ahead and fill that with some placeholder text to get started. And hang on, let me set my font first. And go ahead and fill that. There we go. Now block quotes are typically short and you can design them however you want. If I click and select all of this text, I'm going to create a justified thing here and I'm going to reorganize again my sentences a little bit because when you fill with placeholder text, it looks a little weird. All right, select all of that and let's go ahead and apply that nice magenta color we used again to this text. One thing you want to do is you want to increase the size of this block quote to separate it a little bit and the spacing between your lines as well. And then go ahead and italicize that. Let's bold, bold italicize that. Now I'm going to keep it the same font as my feature text. That's okay. Again, you can make this a sans serif font if you want, just to create some visual interest. That is fine. And I'm going to center this in the, between the image and my text there. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to shorten that up. All right. So that's one way to do a, to create a block quote. You can also put some quotes in here so it looks like it's a saying. All right. So now our article is really shaping up. We really have one more element to place and that's another image here. Images are great to break up long columns of text. So I'm thinking of placing an image down at this bottom corner. In order to do that, we want to make sure that nothing is selected. Go to file place again and let's select another image here. Let's go with this one. All right. And again, we can go ahead and place it. Click anywhere that in the white area 
And again, control shift, click that corner to bring this down. Now I'm going to use these lines here as a guide. I want to make sure that it goes all the way to the bleed line. And I want to line it up with that image line right there. All right, now one thing that happened is I covered up this text. We probably don't want that to happen. So you can apply a text wrap to your image here and it'll take care of that for you. Just click up once. If this is selected, it applies it to all sides and that's okay. We just need a slight text wrap here and that will give us what we need. Now you can continue our, your article on another page if you need to, but this is a very quick look at how you can get a feature article set up in no time. As long as you keep in mind your five key points. Again, that's your headline, your main feature image. You have your main text here, drop cap on your opening paragraph, a block quote, and a smaller image just to create a visual difference between your text and your images. So let's preview this really quick. If we hit W, we can zoom out here and look at what our article looks like without all of those columns and looking pretty good. And we have a nice modern feature article here. All right, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the latest Design Like a Pro episodes. You can also leave comments below if you have any questions. I know we breezed through that pretty quickly. Leave some questions below and I'll do my best to answer those. And you can also send ideas for upcoming episodes to ideas at NikkiHart.com. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.